This is Sam in Billings, Montana. I'm a wood turner and an artist, and I promote and share wood turning through my weekly YouTube videos. I'm also a robust lathe dealer, so if you're interested in the finest American-made lathe, contact me and I'll answer any of your questions. So, thank you. Okay, this is my follow-up video on inserts. In the first video I did hand chase threads in the male and the female inserts for a vessel perhaps like this. Anyway, today I'm going to focus on an alternative. Those kinds of inserts that you can buy uh, online, maybe even at your hardware store. So uh, I'll show you all the different options that I think are available if you're making an urn and that you want to seal up with threads and maybe some ideas on not having threads in that connection. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at uh, a couple inserts that Carl Jacobson offers on his website, which I think is maybe, I don't know, I think it's a, a really good idea and maybe the best um, threaded insert that you can buy that I found. Okay, now a week or so ago I contacted Carl Jacobson and he kindly sent me a couple uh, of his threaded inserts that I could show in this video. This one is three and a half inches uh, outside diameter and this one is two and a half inches uh, outside diameter and they are really, really nice. I'm going to show you some close-ups here in just a second, but I think one comment I would make about these, they're very substantial. When I got the box the other day and picked these up, it's like, wow, those are really hefty, nicely made, obviously. And they're made for the projects that we make, whether we're a wood turner or a woodworker. They're intended for that kind of use. We can get a lot of uh, different kinds of inserts, threaded male and female parts that go together and we can put them in our projects but we have to do a little bit of work on them as seen in some of the plumbing fittings that I showed in other places in this video. So let me uh, readjust here and we'll take a, a little bit closer look at these really really nicely made uh, inserts and you can find these on uh, Niles Bottle Stopper website and with all of these things I'm mentioning here, they're going to be a link in the description. Okay, now I need to uh, bring your attention to a video that Carl made, and I will leave a link to that in the description. And he shows exactly where to put these different components. This one goes in the lid. This ring goes in the lid. This one in the base and it sits just like that. These threads are proud of the surface. Okay. And that just threads together like that. And these threads, you know, the difference between hand chase threads and these, these are whoop, these are perfect every time. So you won't see these in your completed vessel or wood turning project. Those are completely hidden once you get them in there. But you can watch Carl's uh, video and see how that works. So this one is the two and a half inch and that's outside diameter right there. This one is three and a half inches outside diameter. So you can uh, turn that recess on your lathe with uh, cutting tools or scraping tools and that'll work just fine. So these are really nice and I'm not going to talk about prices. You can look at the website and uh, see the prices on these. But I think they're very reasonable and they're so well made and they're ready to go. The outside of these um, where you would glue these in has little ridges. It's not really a thread like on the inside here, but this is going to help uh, to allow you to glue that in 
I think Carl mentioned you can even use woodworker's glue. Uh, I would use epoxy for that. The lid and the base, glue those in and you're all ready to go. Okay, now what I've got here on my workbench, first of all, are a couple hollow forms that you could use for um, a burial urn. This one's maybe seven or eight inches tall. I've got a threaded connection right here in this one. Okay, and here's a small one that you could use for a token urn. That's a, just a lovely piece of box elder. Really, really pretty. And right now, I'm not trying to sell this. So anyway, pretty small, maybe four inches tall with the finial. Here's an alternative. Instead of doing a threaded connection here, take a piece of wood, a dowel or whatever, and just simply make a connection like a slip fit and glue that in. You could make that on the bottom of your lid. Here's my lid for this one. And it's threaded, but if you just simply did a, a slip fit with um, no threads here, no threads on the, the female part, and just put that together, and then you could glue that in. There's nothing wrong with that, because if you have a burial urn, you know, what are the chances that you're going to open that thing up a lot, maybe never. Okay, so simply having a glued connection is a good alternative. Let's take a look at some plumbing fittings. Now, over the years I've done some plumbing. I don't like plumbing. Maybe you do, but uh, you know, sometimes something's got to be done. I've worked on houses and sprinkler systems, and uh, let me show you that particular <laughs> option and, and one of the items I found in my cold storage room back here this is actually a connector if you have uh, a broken water line in your sprinkler system you put that together and then you expand this and it threads together okay and I'm gonna put another picture up here that my friend Bruce sent me which is similar to this and it's got a couple connectors, one on each end, that you could simply cut apart and use. So let's get back to this. Now, now with any connection like this, whether it's a slip fit or threaded, you need a male and a female part. Okay, two parts. So here we go. I'm just threading that together. Now what you can do is simply take a hacksaw or something and cut off the threads here and then take this section right here cut it away the threads are in the, the, the bigger part of that and there you have your your connection okay not a bad idea and with this particular device I've actually got uh, two connections so there's there's one and there's the other one and they fit together with a, a length of uh, one inch PVC. The nice thing about PVC is it's, it's very workable. You can turn it with uh, your, your scraping tools or other kind of wood turning tools, cut it very easily with the saw, and it's uh, not too bad to use there. Um, another connection, if you're just doing a connection that you glue, Okay, here's just a section of one inch pipe and, and here's a, a coupler. Okay, and a coupler usually has a little ridge on the inside of that and you might just cut this in half right here. Okay, you can glue that together with some PVC adhesive, PVC cement, and you've got your connection. Okay, and there's another option. Let's take a look at, uh, here's another one. This is just a plug right here. And you could just take this, this part off, saw that off, and you have your, your male and your female connection. And then cut this back here. Um, there's always a little bit of uh, handwork with these. There's some ridges on here, probably for a, 
a, a wrench of some sort to grip onto, but you could very easily use that. Oh, uh, lots of different options here. Here's a threaded coupler. It's got a glued or a slip fit on one end and threads on the other. They go into this, looks to me like it's a inch and a half threaded pipe. There's another one. Okay, all different kinds of options with, I should say another category maybe is a better word, are brass or copper plumbing fittings. And you can simply use a copper nipple with a, another kind of a connection and just glue those together or solder them together. I don't know uh, how you do that. This one, I'm pretty sure I used a similar connector. Let me just take this apart. I used a similar connector on my pressure pot when I went to plumb that together. Now, that's a long thread. So you have a, the male thread and the female thread right there. Now this is brass. Okay, It's really nice. It's uh, also fairly expensive if you buy brass and sometimes if you get up around an inch, inch and a half, it can be really expensive for something like this. But that's a good option right there. Um, there are way too many threads on that so you could, you could cut that apart right there, cut it in half and there's your your female connector. So you put that into the lid of your vessel and you've got a, a threaded connection and you might want to put a lid or something onto this. Just connect that with uh, with a wood, turn a finial or a little handle and there you go. So those are some good options. What else do we have here? These are, I just put, put these up here. These are just some brass fittings that I had and I suspect that I bought some of these because I was using them as ferrules for handles. Okay, this one is, uh, I'm sure that's an inch. Okay, and that probably cost me <laughs> a few bucks for that one there. Um, this is three quarter, so I'm sure that's an inch. And that would make some really nice ferrule material. So you could use this male end right here, cut the threads off that you need, and then use the rest of that for um, a ferrule, for a tool handle. Well, I think we covered a lot of good aspects of inserts. In the first video, I did hand chase threads. And in this video, I covered some different inserts that maybe you can just purchase online or maybe at your hardware store. And I think Carl Jacobson's inserts are really top-notch. Maybe that might be the first place you go to. Anyway, thank you very much for hanging in there with me. And please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And I will talk to you next time. Thanks.